Hi, I'm Don. I'm one of the artists at the Animation Academy here in Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World in Florida. Here at the Animation Academy, we teach guests how to draw some of their favorite classic Disney characters. Today, we're going to teach you how to draw the boss, the big cheese, Mickey Mouse. And we're going to start off Mickey with a circle about the size of a grapefruit or a softball. I like to put it down here toward the bottom center of the page. That way we have plenty of room for his hat because we're going to draw him as the sorcerer's apprentice. So the most important thing is to keep your lines very, 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 very light, almost invisible. Most of us work without erasers, so if you do make a mistake and you don't have an eraser, don't worry about it. We'll darken it in at the very end, we'll polish it up, and we'll make it look like you knew exactly what you were doing, just like a real animator. So once we have our circle, or something kind of, sort of circular, we're going to add guidelines. Now, for Mickey Mouse as the Sorcerer's Apprentice, we're going to tilt his head a little bit to the side. So the middle of his face isn't perfectly centered, it's going to be a tiny bit off-center, probably no more than the width of your pencil. So we'll add a little curved line just off-center. That is going to be the middle of his head. Next, we're going to add the horizontal guideline to help us figure out where to place his eyes. And that's going to sit about a third of the way above the bottom of our circle. And again, it's going to be a curved line, almost like a smiley face going from side to side. And there you go. That's the basic foundation of Mickey Mouse. You have the shape of his head, you know where the middle of his face is going to go, and you know where to place his eyes. Everything else is going to be built on top of that. And we're going to build him up layer by layer by layer, the same way an animator or a cartoonist or a comic book artist would to create their character. So our next layer is what we call the framework of the character. These are the basic parts and features that are going to make it look more like Mickey Mouse. The first thing we're going to start with is actually the hardest part about drawing Mickey. He's a character that you might call deceptively simple. And the hardest thing about him are his ears. If you look at the top of his head, when Mickey is facing forward, looking straight ahead at you, his ears sit perfectly centered between the top and the side of his head. When we turn his head, his ears will rotate around the top of his head. So we've turned his head a little bit, so we're going to rotate his ears a little bit. Instead of being perfectly centered, this ear is going to move a little closer to the guideline. And this ear is going to move upward a little closer to the middle of his head. The next hardest thing about his ears are their shape. Many people assume they're perfect circles, and they're not. They're ovals, like a potato chip, and they're roughly half the size of his head. So if you took both of his ears off like he were a Mr. Potato Head, they'd fit perfectly inside your circle at the same time. So we're going to draw an oval roughly half the size of our circle. Now that's going to give us the basic shape of his ear. And the other ear is going to go up here. Now the really hard part about his ears, the part that really frustrates even professional artists, his ears are perfectly identical. They look exactly the same. So one of the nice things about drawing him as the sorcerer's apprentice, his hat is going to cover up most of this ear. So we don't have to worry about making it perfect. Just draw something that looks close enough. And again, keep it really, really light. So now that we have his ears, we're going to draw that sorcerer's hat on top of his head. And the sorcerer's hat is a cone, like an ice cream cone or a traffic cone. It's going to start here on the side of his head and curve up toward the top of the page and then right back down toward the other side of his head. So now that we have the hardest thing about Mickey Mouse out of the way, we're going to start to work 
on his face. And I'm going to begin by giving him eyes. Mickey's eyes are these tall, skinny oval shapes sitting here on top of our guideline, very, very close to the middle of his face. It doesn't touch the center line, but it does get pretty close to it. Think of it kind of like a surfboard. His other eye is going to go on this side of his head, and it's the same shape, it's just a little tiny bit shorter. Remember, the guideline is curving this way, so this eye is actually going to sit a little bit lower. So it's going to go up a little bit less. So there are his eyes. In front of his eyes, we're going to add his snout or his muzzle. And again, this is an oval shape, kind of like the shape of his ear. And it's going to sit a little bit above our guideline, so we're going to go through the bottom of his eyes as we draw this nice big oval, kind of like an egg. So that's his snout. And the last part of our framework is going to be his nose. And again, the nose is an oval shape. In fact, the only real circle is the one we started with. Everything else about Mickey Mouse is an oval. So his nose is going to sit right here where our two guidelines cross, and it's a little bit smaller than the muzzle, about the size of a grape or an olive sitting right here in the middle of his face. And that's it. There's your framework for Mickey Mouse. Now we can start to add the details, those little things that are really going to make it look more like Mickey. And one of the first things we're going to add are dimples. That's right, dimples make everything cuter. That's why we add them to almost every character. And they're also important because they form the anchor point of the character's smile. For Mickey, his dimple is going to sit in line with the middle of his nose, about halfway between the muzzle and the edge of our circle. Right about there. Nice little curved line. From the center of that dimple, to the bottom of his muzzle, we're going to add his smile. This nice curve and connect them together. Underneath of his smile, we're going to add his lower lip. Think of his lower lip like a hammock on a nice tropical beach. It's going to drop down from the smile below the circle and then curve back up toward his muzzle. Nice big smiley face. Inside of his mouth, we're going to add his tongue. And his tongue looks like two curved lines, one in front of the other, kind of like rolling hills or sand dunes on that nice tropical beach. To finish up his mouth, underneath of it, we're going to add his chin. And his chin is the same shape as his lower lip, but it's only going to connect to the edge of the circle. So there's the bottom part of his mouth. To finish up the lower half of his head, we're going to add Mickey's adorable chubby cheeks. And his cheeks look like the shape of a heart. Half of the heart goes on each side of his head. So we'll start right above our dimple at the guideline and we're going to draw half of a heart as it curves a little bit past the edge of our circle. And then we're going to use the curve of our circle and guide it all the way down to his chin. So we're going to keep that line parallel to our circle and bring it all the way down. So there's half of a heart. On this side, since we can't see the dimple because his muzzle's in the way, we're just going to start at the guideline and we're going to curve around his muzzle and bring it all the way down to our chin. So there's his other cute little chubby cheek. To finish up his face, we're going to add his mask and his pupils. 
His mask is his hairline. It's what separates the black from the beige part of his face. And it's exactly the same shape as his eyes. It's just a little bit bigger. So we'll start at the cheek and we're gonna follow the same curve as his eye. We're just going to make it a lot bigger as it comes up toward the top of the circle and then down to the center line. It kind of looks like a hook or a candy cane. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Start here at the cheek and we're gonna follow the shape of his eye all the way around till they connect in or Mickey's initials. To finish him up, inside of his eyes, we're gonna add pupils. Now, I like to have Mickey looking at us, so I'm gonna place his pupils here at the bottom outside corner of his eye. His pupil is a smaller oval, about the size of a peanut M&M. Right here in the bottom corner of each side, just sitting right on top of his muzzle. And that way it looks as if he's looking right off of that page, right at us. To finish him up, we're gonna complete the hat. At the bottom of the sorcerer's hat, we want it to curve around his forehead from side to side. So we'll put a little curved line and connect them together. And at the base of the sorcerer's hat, there's this big halo of blue fabric. So we're gonna draw another line just like that. We're gonna bring it a little bit higher up above his head and this time I'm gonna keep curving it around till it touches the side of his head. So it appears as if that halo of fabric wraps completely around the back of his head. The last thing that we need to add are some decorations to our sorcerer's hat. So we're gonna add some stars and crescent moon shapes. And with the stars and the moons, you can put them wherever you like. Remember, this is a magical hat. So they move and change shape. They get bigger, smaller, float to the top or sink to the bottom. I'm gonna start with a nice big moon right here in the middle and then add a couple of stars. I like to make my shapes a lot bigger. That way I don't have to draw as many of them on, but it's entirely up to you. Once we have all of our lines and shapes and something that looks kind of, sort of, maybe like Mickey Mouse, what we're gonna do now is darken everything in. And I'm gonna start with his hat. And you can see as you go over that nice light line with your darker line, everything else fades away and starts to disappear into the background. Your eye naturally focuses on the dark finished line and you don't have to worry about erasing anything. That's how animators, comic book artists, and cartoonists create characters. And now, so did we. So as we go over everything and we darken them in, at the end, we'll shade them in, we'll add a little color, we'll help to make them pop right off the page. And then your drawings, make sure you sign your name on there. You always wanna sign your drawing somewhere, at the top, at the bottom, on the right or the left wherever there's a little bit of room for it. So as we finish them up, think about some of your favorite animated films. Perhaps Fantasia, starring Mickey Mouse as the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now Fantasia came out back in 1940, and to create Fantasia, it took a team of several hundred artists many years to put the movie together. To make an animated character like Mickey Mouse come alive on screen, it takes 24 drawings just to make one second of a cartoon. Every single second that Mickey is on screen doing something, that's 24 drawings. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but Fantasia is about 90 minutes long from beginning to end. So to make those characters move and dance and jump and sing, that took over 130,000 drawings just to make the characters come alive for 90 minutes. So as you draw Mickey Mouse and you finish him up, remember this is one drawing. Even if you drew him 23 more times, that would still only be one second of a cartoon. That's barely the blink of a character's eye. So don't worry if yours isn't perfect on the very first try. 
after you've drawn them maybe five or six thousand times, you start to get pretty good at it. So as we finish them up, we'll shade them in a little bit, we'll add a little color, and then we'll sign our drawings, and you will have just drawn yourself the one and only most important character out there, Mr. Mickey Mouse. So once we have everything darkened, all we have to do to shade him in, I'm going to start with his ears. Use the side of your pencil. That'll make it go a lot quicker. Again, don't worry about staying in the lines or filling it in perfectly. In animation, animators have what are called cleanup artists. And that is literally what they do. They clean up the animator's mess. So we'll let them handle that. If you want to be your own cleanup artist after you're done, go right ahead, break out that eraser, and then you can go ahead and make everything look all neat and perfect. But don't really worry about it too much. For his pupils, I like to add a little half moon or a little circle in the corner. Just to add that little extra twinkle or sparkle to his eye. Makes him look a little bit more lifelike. And you can do the same for his nose. Just to add a little oval shape there in the corner that we're not going to darken in. And last but not least, the inside of his mouth, above his tongue. Like I said, sign your name on there at the top, at the bottom, on the right or on the left, wherever there's a little bit of room for you. There you go, you've just drawn Mickey Mouse. I hope you come and see me or some of the other great artists here at the Animation Academy here in Disney's Hollywood Studios and we'll teach you how to draw dozens of your favorite Disney characters. Thanks for watching, see you real soon.